Hi, I'm Matt Ambrose with Defense Acquisition University. And for the next five minutes or so, I'd like to talk about developmental and operational testing and how they are used in Department of Defense Acquisition. We're going to compare them, uh, show where they're similar and where they're different, and where they're expected to be used throughout the acquisition life cycle. So let's talk about DT and OT here. What is tested? It's a little bit different in developmental and operational testing. In developmental testing, we're measuring performance against the design specifications or critical technical parameters on the program. So it is a program manager's tool to see how is the program doing in terms of meeting the design requirements. OT is a different focus. It focuses on the operational effectiveness and suitability of the system. So does the system do what it's supposed to do in terms of mission effectiveness and can it be operated and supported out in that operational environment that it's supposed to be used in. And so the, those things are derived directly from your capability documents. Now how about who conducts the test? That's also a little bit different. For developmental testing, that's going to be the government and contractor, a team type of arrangement there. Uh, contractors are often doing a lot of the developmental testing at their facilities, but the government is going to be involved. They're going to observe. They're going to take data from those things to see, again, from the program perspective, how are we doing in terms of meeting our specifications and critical technical parameters. It's government only on the OT&E side. This is going to be your folks that are independent operational testers are going to come in and run this, and they want to see your soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines actually operating the equipment in an operational environment. So who's responsible for this? In this case, it's going to be the program manager. The acquisition chain really does the developmental testing. The developmental test organizations run up through a chain of command to the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition Technology and Logistics. So it's very much an acquisition program uh, focus on the side for on the side of DT&E. Here it's going to be your independent operational test agency as I talked about. Those are your AFOTEX, your ATEX, uh, your COMOP TEV 4s of the world. Therefore the different services that do the no kidding independent operational testing. And those folks do not work for the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition Technology and Logistics. They work for the Director of Operational Test and Evaluation who sits at the same level of the USDA TNL and does not work for that person. So they are independent and in a separate chain of command as well. So where is the test conducted? A lot of different places for DT, different controlled environments, could be labs, could be wind tunnels, uh, could be test ranges, um, but usually what you'll see there for that environment is a very controlled set of circumstances that you're trying to get specific data from. That's very different from the OT focus as far as the environment goes for operational testing. We want that no kidding wartime environment, the field environment that we expect the system to operate in. We want to see what it's going to do out there in the surf, sand, mud, forest, wherever it's supposed to operate. So overall, developmental testing is very much program focused. It's the program manager's tool to see how the program is doing in terms of the technical requirements on the system. OT has very much a warfighter focus in terms of what are the warfighter's requirements captured in those capability documents and is the system operationally effective and suitable according to those requirements that are found in those capability documents and that's what your independent testers are looking to test. Now we do, as a matter of policy, try to integrate or combine these two types of testing. So combined testing is something you'll hear about and it's not just a best practice, it's expected on your systems. Where it makes sense, where the test objectives are very similar, we probably ought to be combining our developmental and operational testing to save time and money on the program and to make maximum use of the data that we get out of these different types of tests. Now let's take a look at where the different types of test events that we would expect in developmental and operational testing might occur over the life cycle. First, you're going to start with a test and evaluation master plan that you're going to put together prior to milestone A. So to guide all of this, we're going to have a test and evaluation master plan or temp 
that's going to tell us what our schedule is for testing, what tests are going to occur when, who's going to do those tests, those kinds of things. And that's developed by an integrated product team or process team called the Test Working IPT or WIPIT. You have representatives there from your operational test community and your developmental test community and you want your tester, your head tester or test chief from your program to chair that integrated product team. Developmental testing is going to start kind of early and often. Um, as soon as we have folks on board to do prototyping and tech technology maturation and risk reduction, we'd expect to start doing some developmental testing. And that's going to run all the way through about to milestone C right in there. Um, because all through here, we're going to be checking to see how is the system design maturing, how is it doing in terms of meeting our critical technical parameters and those design requirements that we have that we've derived from the user's requirements. Early on also, it's not a bad idea to get some user feedback. So if you've got prototypes or components that it's safe to get warfighters on, do some early operational assessments prior to milestone B. That is always a good idea. When you get out into engineering and manufacturing development on the operational test side, you are going to do an operational assessment prior to milestone C because you have to prove out to your milestone decision authority that the system as designed works in the operational environment. Really the only way to do that is some sort of operational test or it could be that we've done some combined testing here with the developmental test schedule and we're doing an assessment of all the data that we got out of both DT and OT when we were doing combined testing. So it could either be a, an assessment of testing that's already occurred or it could be a separate test event. But in either case, we need an operational assessment prior to milestone C and making that decision to go into low rate initial production. Once we have some production items out here on the operational test side, we're going to do IOT&E or initial operational test and evaluation on production equipment. And that's kind of going to be our big final exam. We expect that to be done, completed, and our test reports written by the time we have our full rate production decision review because you've got to have good results out of IOT&E and prove that the production systems work before we go to full rate production. If we have some problems or if we have some changes to our system out here past uh, our low rate initial production and our IOT&E, we may do some follow on test and evaluation which is also an operational test event to see if the fixes that we have put in place are actually working or not. So this depicts then timing wise generally where you see each of these test events across the life cycle. Recall that this is a flexible system. So you need to develop your test planning based on what you need at each of the milestones and the information that you need and the information you already have on your system so that you're doing enough testing to make good decisions and you're not wasting money testing either. And remember that we want to, where it makes sense, combine our operational and our developmental testing. I hope this has been helpful in terms of defining what DT and OT and R and how they are used throughout the acquisition lifecycle. Thanks for tuning in.